Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to install a bumper guard underneath the front bumper on the Acura NSX by Scrape Armor. If you're new to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications as I like producing cool car content. You're not going to want to miss it. And be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps. Let's take a look at this Scrape Armor product that I am going to install on the Acura NSX today. So here's the box that contains the Scrape Armor package. I already opened it up, but wow, it's packaged pretty nicely. Now inside there was uh, some accessories here, as well as the kit to actually put underneath the car. And of course I have the instructions here as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and break the seal. And there we have it folks. This is the Scrape Armor Bumper Guard. So there's three pieces to it. There's a big piece that goes right here in the middle and then there are two pieces that go underneath the sides here. So I'm going to go ahead and off camera I'm going to disassemble this entire box and we could take a closer look at the components. So I've gone ahead and just removed the plastic covering because this is almost shrink wrapped. It's really cool. And I could show you the individual components here. Uh, sort of stuck together here with a little bit of glue just to keep them uh, keep them in place I guess so let me go ahead and take care of these things all right so everything was sort of tacked into place with uh, some of this gummy glue here just so it had a great looking presentation so this is the product and it looks terrific and it's lightweight it is plastic but it's that kind of plastic that glides like it's very hard to scratch so that's really cool. And I could see here where a CNC machine has cut um, some indentations in here. Obviously, it's going to reduce weight and it's only going to allow it to be scratched on the high surfaces. And then this, of course, is the center section here. So uh, this part, yep, same material, same quality. Everything looks really good. We do have the instruction packet here. I also printed them off online. So, but we'll take a look at this one here since it came with this kit. And we also have a hardware pack. <laughs> Everything is sort of glued to this uh, cardboard backing, but uh, it looks pretty nice. I mean, it's a great presentation and it looks like it's going to be a great product. We do have a bag over here that contain uh, some liquids and a drill bit and tools. And of course we got the hardware over here. So let's get to opening the instructions and learning more about how to install this product on the Acura NSX. You know, this is pretty cool. It actually has uh, some statistics here. 20 years in the industry and 10,000 hours of real-world road tests. Very cool. So it shows you what's included. We got the protection panels themselves. We have uh, stainless steel fasteners, which is in the hardware pack. We have a uh, Torx bit, positioning tape, the uh, scrape seal compound with nozzle. That's over here, right? Uh, we have a blending tool as well, and a self-centered drill bit, and a tube squeeze key. So, this here is the drill bit. And as you press into the thing you want to drill, the drill bit will be exposed. It's right in there. So the drill bit will end up being pressed into these holes into the bottom of the bumper. Now, a lot of folks have said, I'm kind of afraid to drill into my bumper. I, this isn't really something I'm comfortable with. And that's why I am doing this video today, because I want to show you that this will be a great product to actually protect the bottom of the bumper of the Acura NSX, but that even by drilling into the bumper, you're not really affecting that much. I mean, any other product that you would stick under here, whether it was glued on or bolted on in some way, it's still doing the same thing. This one here just seems to be held on so much better because of the number of screw holes. So once this is installed, I think I can pretty much take almost any type of an impact and this isn't going anywhere. But more than that, I'm protecting this expensive carbon fiber and also these painted sections of the bumper. By making sure that these are protected, I'm saving myself thousands of dollars in replacement and repair. So I had recently seen on the uh, one of the Corvette forums, there was a Corvette with the uh, carbon fiber front splitter on the front. That thing was destroyed. I mean, just 
a few little impacts and it just burns right through the carbon fiber. In fact, this is very thin carbon fiber here on the NSX. So I want to make sure I protect the bottom of that, but not only that, I want to protect the little ends of the bumper here as well. So I think this is a great product for this. So if you're driving your car, you want something like this. And that's why I chose this particular product after doing some more research. See, this is made of a proprietary polymer blend, and they say it's very durable. It's a slick plastic. So our materials allow the vehicle to slide on and off obstacles, diminishing potential damage from bumpers, pulling which often leads to cracking. So that's their main thing is cracking, um, especially with the carbon fiber pieces. Anytime that you have more contact here and it weakens this area, of course, it's going to crack. And of course, you will get scrapes in the painted parts. So Scrape Armor has let me know that because of this reduced surface friction, a vehicle safe adhesive would not hold up at high speeds, which is true. This is bolted on and there's a lot of holes in here. <laughs> it's definitely on there, uh, going to be on there really well. And it says that Scrape Armor is a modular system. If one portion breaks, they can always replace the other portion, which is true. So you happen to scrape this part here and it's destroyed, well, or it doesn't look good, you just replace that particular part. That's pretty cool. It only takes about 10 minutes and replacements are covered under warranty. Now, some other vehicles like the C8 Corvette, for example, it already has enough holes up here and enough bolts that they were able to use the existing bolts uh, or remove the existing bolts and then install scrape armor without having to do any drilling. But of course, the NSX doesn't have holes up front most of the holes are back further behind the carbon fiber section here that's up front. One interesting thing about this product is we need to use a scrape seal. So there's a silicone product in here and that is put between the product and the bumper and that's to ensure that we don't have any debris getting between this and the bumper. So it makes sense. It seals it up, it anchors it into place so it won't move around and it also protects from any type of debris from getting up in between this and the bumper. We don't want that. And the nice thing about this particular adhesive is that it's easy to take off. You, know, you could use some floss as you would if you wanted to debadge your car like I did. And then take like the 3M eraser wheel. I use that on my wheels in order to clear up any of the residue that was left over when I had wheel weights. Link in the description below if you missed that video. That was a good one. So let's start with the remaining steps that we have to perform here in order to start the process. Now they're also recommending to clean the surface, which I have. This is very clean and ready to go. These are obviously clean, just took them out of the package. And they're saying to install between 50 and 90 degrees, it's 70 degrees in my garage, which is great. Additional tip, most great farmer protection panels are shipped flat, but some installations may benefit from pre-bending. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So the next we're gonna do a dry fit. So let's get underneath the uh, NSX here and let's see how they look when we do a dry fit. All right, I'm under the car now, and I can actually see how easy these pieces line up. Huh, pretty cool. So I want to make sure that I, you know, obviously, in the case of the NSX, there's like a lip here and a lip here on both the painted part and the carbon fiber part. So I can go right up to that lip, and I have protection at the front of the bumper. Very cool. Now, if I take the middle section, I can also do the same. Everything lines up perfectly. Very nice. And I'm going to do the same with the other piece on the other end. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use some alcohol in a little sprayer here. And that's to ensure that I actually get any residue off because there are adhesives involved and between the tape that holds this in place and then uh, some of the silicone that I'm going to use in order to prevent it from any debris from getting in there. Um, yeah, it's very important that we go ahead and make sure this is completely clean. So I've gone ahead and used alcohol in order to clean not only the underside of the bumper but the top surfaces of the scrape armor. And I have in my kit some double stick foam tape. I'm gonna stick several of these on top of the scrape armor section and then 
push it into place. I'm going to fit it into place so that I can start my drilling. Now I'm going to start with the center section and then work out to the sides. I don't want to start at one side and if I don't get it lined up right then everything's going to be lined up wrong. So I'm going to start here with the middle section because it's the biggest and it lines up perfectly with right underneath the bumper here where the carbon fiber meets the paint. So stick a few of these on and lift it into place. So I've gone ahead and just installed four sticky sections here. Now once we obviously drill the holes we're going to lower this back down and remove these. These are only temporary in order to make sure the fitment is correct. So let's get this up now onto the car. Okay so I'm just going to make sure that I have my edges right at the ends of the carbon fiber section here. You can sort of feel where we're at and I can press just a little bit in the place, make sure everything lines up where I want it to line up. Let's see, right on the edge there. Need to come this way a little bit. Okay. So let's take a closer look here. Um, we have everything matching up directly underneath the carbon fiber. Same on both sides. And of course, you know, we are hanging down here a little bit because we need to obviously drill some holes and there's foam tape. But you know, once it's in place, it'll be nearly invisible. Unless you're actually bending down to look for it, you won't see it from up here, which is really nice. So next, let me go ahead and get my drill. And this quarter inch drill bit will then be used in order to drill holes you know, through the carbon fiber, at least for this middle section. Now what I plan on doing is starting in the middle and I think I actually want to use a few screws in order to anchor this down a little bit so that I don't have a lot of holes moving around because obviously this is hanging down a little bit. I don't want to start over here and then go over there. It, things aren't going to line up well. So I'm going to start here in the middle and I'm going to work my way out. I'm actually going to feed some screws in at the same time. Now I've already taken my screws out of the hardware packet, so they're all right here. And of course, there's a Torx bit for these screws. And of course, you need some type of a driver that'll hold a Torx bit. Do not use a drill or an electric screwdriver on this because you're probably going to have some problems. When these things are trying to bite into this material, this, and of course that, uh, you don't want to force these screws in beyond where they should be. So, all right, I have my drill bit chucked up here. And of course this is spring loaded, so it won't allow it to go in too deep. Now, obviously I need to concern myself with how thick this part of the carbon fiber is. So I'm not going to drill excessively deep <laughs> once I get this, uh, especially here in the front here. I don't want to go too deep and end up going through the other side. This should prevent that but I'm still going to be extra cautious because this is my first time doing this, obviously. So what I want to make sure I do is start in the middle, but not only that, I want to make sure that I pull this scrape armor back against the lip that's here at the back of the carbon fiber. I'm going to eye everything up, make sure everything looks like, yeah, everything looks good. So at this point, I can start with the drilling. So what I'm thinking of doing is taking the two holes that are right back here at the very back and drilling them first and then inserting a couple screws, not over tightening at this point, just trying to make sure that I help keep it aligned exactly where I want it to be. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure that everything is exactly where it should be. Everything lines up really nice. I'm gonna start with the two holes that are right here in the very back so that I can get this anchored down with a couple screws before I continue going on. Now I do have my drill ready to go, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select one of these holes and drill it. Let's go ahead and insert one of the screws. Here we are. There we go, just to hold that in place. And then I can move on to my next hole. Now, 
there we go we're sort of anchored in place right now right here in the middle which is awesome so I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do is continue along the back here and then that way I can ensure that everything is lined up appropriately and then I'm gonna lower this and I'm gonna take out all the different pieces of double stick tape that are here holding this in place because I know that I can make sure that there's a great grip surface here in the back with no problems. Uh, matter of fact, I might just drill two more just to be on the safe side and not keep going across the entire back and then lower this and then take those uh, little positioning pieces of tape out. Okay, so now that I know that these four fit in here great, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these and remove the piece and then I'm gonna reinstall it using just these four screws and then again start working from the inside out. Okay, so I took all the adhesive off the back of this and off the carbon fiber part of the bumper as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start a few screws here just so I can get this all lined back up. Now, obviously I wanna make sure that everything fits the best it can. And the instructions did say to continue to drill even though you had the uh, foam tape on the back, but I just wanna make sure that I have something that doesn't move around. And for me, that's some screws. So now that I've gotten these four in the back installed, I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, two here on each side in the back as well, so that everything is very well anchored here at the back, and then I could start on the front. Now, once I get these in, I'm not really tightening them very much, the screws, that is. I'm just setting them in here enough so that they hold everything in place, but that they don't actually uh, really pull this up, because I'm only using them as a temporary hold so that I can complete the rest of my drilling. So once again, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm pushed up and then back against that lip and then drill more holes. So all the screws have now been installed at the very back. And this is good because it really provides a great anchor for uh, drilling the holes in the front. So there is a slight gap here and that's because the actual splitter itself comes up and then a little bit forward so there is a little bit of a curve to it so we're going to make sure that we push up and then we drill these holes that are in the very front and then once all those are drilled we can then back these ones out because then we want to install our uh, silicone here in the front but we're not going to just do that right yet we're going to go ahead and make sure we do the both uh, ends underneath the other sides of the painted bumpers before we get to that. All right, we've finished inserting all of the screws into the drilled holes here in the front. So this is looking pretty sharp. Now, obviously I wanna take care of installing the ends next. And then I can lower this and I wanna make sure it's clean because there are some leftover residue from drilling into the carbon fiber here. So definitely wanna make sure I drop this and get all that out of there. And then I can actually start to reinstall this, but only start the screws a little bit because we're gonna stick some silicone in here in order to make sure it's adhesed to the bumper as well as prevent any type of debris from getting in there. Okay, so now we're gonna to try to line up the scrape armor on the outside. And what I'm doing is I'm feeling back here by the tire, trying to get this to line up with the little notch that's back here. Now I can actually slide this thing a little bit more inboard so it can bump up against uh, the other piece that I just installed, but I don't want to do that. I want to have it come out just a tiny bit so that it lines up perfectly with the edge of the bumper here and the edge of the bumper here. 
So once that's in place, it's good to go. So I'm just going to take a little bit of painter's tape and actually just stick this onto the bumper at this point rather than using the double stick tape. And that'll ensure that it, it sort of holds it in place and it'll keep it balanced so it won't walk around when I'm trying to drill it. And then I won't have to deal with taking that residue off the back. Okay, this is lined up pretty much where I want it to be. Again, I'm making sure that I push back far enough that it's against this lip and it actually form fits to this lip perfectly. So I'm going to start by drilling this back hole closest to the center and install a screw in there just to keep it steady. So then I could also do the other back hole here. And so it's now ready to have the front holes drilled. So let's get started on this. Here we go. All right. I'm also going to put a piece of tape here because I think my next uh, choice is going to be this hole right here. Instead of trying to drill all these, I want to actually try to get this mounted all the way around. So that way um, I could just do the fronts afterward like I did the other side. So this will be our next hole. And then finally this hole. All right, so after I've gone ahead and installed all the screws, at least nice and lightly, I didn't screw them in really tough because <laughs> I want to remove this, but I want to show you, you know, it's, it's here, it is visible, but you know, when you're standing up above the car, you really don't notice it. So it is there, it is providing protection, which is exactly why I got this. Now this piece, the center piece is installed. I'm going to go ahead and install the piece on this side off camera. And then afterward, I'm going to take all of these off and of course get the uh, silicone here and be able to insert it in and then reinstall the screws for our final fitment. So I've gone ahead and cleaned everything up, both the top of the scrape guard and the bottom of the bumper. And I started to insert the screws and left about a quarter inch gap here. This is exactly what we need in order to insert the silicone and then we could tighten the screws down. So let's start with that process. So here's our silicone sealant that comes in the pack. I'm going to cut the tip off of this and I'm also going to pierce uh, the end of this with, uh, with its cap. And then this key is used to roll up the entire tube and then that way as you're slowly turning this you're getting a steady flow of silicone from the end and just an FYI for the tip here there's one two three four five and a half sections in it we want to be able to leave about four and a half sections so I'm able to just cut right here and that's about the size of the hole it's about a quarter inch that we have left here in the end and that's going to be what we use in order to inject our silicone. All right, so I'm just going to insert. I'm actually going to squash down the very end here so it makes it a little bit easier to insert the key into this, like that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now that the key's insert into, inserted into this, I can start to roll it and then get a... Uh, a good consistent flow out of this so I'm just going to keep an eye on it while I turn the key Oop, there we go it's already starting to come out so I can get this into the area where I want to put the silicone and just start turning the key and I just want to fill this gap up don't know if you can see this on camera or not but I'm just getting a steady bead in there and I'll bring the camera a little bit closer I don't know if you can see that in there or not, but I'm trying just to fill it up so that when it gets squashed down, I have some that comes back out. So I'm just going to keep going. Awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten those screws down now so that I don't have to uh, continue to work my way all the way across and uh, potentially have my silicone dry up. Okay, 
This is going to climb under the car, and I'm going to start around the middle here. And I don't want to over tighten everything. There's really no point in doing that. Um, you don't want to strip these screws out. Okay, let's do this one next. So now we have this scrape armor uh, spray that we want to use. We want to shake this up first, and then we want to spray this onto the area where we just put the silicone. And this will allow us to be able to use our scraper to ensure that we can get a nice even um, extraction, <laughs> if you will, of the silicone. I also grabbed a few paper towels. Let me move the camera over here because I think I'm going to start over here where it's a little bit thicker and I'm just going to go along and I'm going to use uh, the sharper corner here, I think, for this vehicle. So I'm just going to scrape along. I'm going to take my excess off of here. I still have some here. I'm going to scrape again. So down here at the end there's a little bit that stuck out here so I just decided to give it a good wipe. And uh, same with uh, some of this here. This is on the bumper itself so I can go ahead and take I'd say this is a has a trick to it. You want to make sure that you go back over the areas that are a little bit bumpy. There we go. So that everything is nice and smooth. There we go. And then I could remove some of the spray that allowed me to very easily pull the silicone off the car. I'm just going to get really close to that bead, but not actually remove it because I don't want to mess that up. Now I can see that in here there's a little bit missing, so I'm going to go ahead and add some in there. Okay, so I'm just going to redo this particular area here. Just making sure I get some silicone in the gap where I missed. And then I'll go back over it with the spray. And then I will go back over it with the same edge of the scraper. So it's all evened out. So all the silicone has been added and wiped down. It looks sharp. I got to admit, this is, uh, I was kind of afraid to do this project because of course drilling into a bumper is kind of a concern I think for anybody but this really wasn't that difficult to do now I have already drilled into a bumper to install the front splitters here on the BMW Y8 but you know this is a more expensive car there's carbon fiber you have to drill into and this took a long time to drill into even with a lot of pressure upward that carbon fiber is strong obviously but now we have a good lip that's well protected on the Acura NSX. Hey, big thanks to Scrape Armor. They did a great job with this kit. Everything that I got in this kit worked well. The product looks great. I will provide any updates in the description how I feel about it over time. But, I mean, this thing's guaranteed, so I'm happy with it. Obviously, a self-install is only guaranteed for three years or 36,000 miles, according to the documentation I saw. But if you have this installed by a uh, certified installer, then, I mean, it's going to be a lifetime guarantee. I'm happy with the three years, 36. I honestly don't think this is going to get to the point where this has to be replaced. I'm not going to do anything dumb with the car. But I'm glad it's there to save me from having to repaint these and from having to replace this. This is great. So if you happen to enjoy today's video, please give me a big thumbs up. Please drop any questions or comments in the comment box below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I like producing cool car content. You're not going to want to miss it. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.